Hi and welcome to the final program of the Galagadi 2020 and 2021 wildlife competition. This is the final selection process or the final judgment of the year 2021. Remember we've had that COVID lockdown period where everyone couldn't do so we moved the competition on a bit. So we'll keep it on the dates that we've got it currently from October to October year on year. And what I've done is um, very quickly I've gone through and we've selected the best of the bunch and put them and it's around 60 images that I'll quickly scroll through. And then I've got a folder which says the top 30 and we'll go into the top 30 and maybe just scan around and talk a bit about that. And then we've got special mention which is a, a couple of guys and girls that that basically just missed the, the final six uh, photographers. The final six photographers, remember, are the photographers that are invited, all inclusive, to the Galagadi Lodge on the 8th, 9th and 10th of October, the Friday, Saturday and Sunday of October this year. And I think it's thus next month. And um, during that time, that weekend at the Galagadi Lodge, we'll select the winner, the second, third prize and any other category there there might have been a winner selected for. So let's start off straight away and um, go into the best of the bunch. Okay, so. so what I've done is um, we've selected the best of the bunch and this is the best of the bunch. I'll just quickly scroll through. In rows of three, you can just quickly glance if your, if your photo is on there, if you can recognize it. What we will do is, is we will select a, um, a couple of other um, uh, uh, videos or do a, a couple of other productions where we can group the best landscape images, the best portrait images, um, and the best black and white images, and best art images, and maybe make a program of where we thought that if a person maybe just a bit of did a bit of uh, editing that his image would have been in the, in the bunch higher up than, than he, what, what he ended up actually. So those are the ones and this is the top 30. The top 30 is, if you can recognize yours over there, Carl Stander, Suzanne Engelbrecht, Dominic Maria, Hugh Juster, Franz, Edmund Elmer, a uh, couple of Hugh Juster. Gerard Teron, Gert Lamprecht, Hugh Mitchler, Hugh Mitchler has got a, quite a lot, Johan Mocke, Stone, Marianne Erasmus, Marissa de Toei, Mary Jane Sisto, Michiel Divenhagen, um, Tracy Slaven, Warren Fleming, Willem Kruger, um, and that is for the top 30. And What's there to mention in these? Um, the overall summary is that these beautiful landscapes that is, uh, is uh, totally dominated by, by Hugh Mitchell throughout the year. Some beautiful portraits, good compositions, good reflection of, of the Kelari Hemsbok Park. And the special mentions we got here is Gerard Tron, Hugh Mitchell, those two, Mary Jane. Michiel Divenhagen, you, Tracy, and Warren Fleming. Um, what I can mention about the special mentions is that Gerard Thorne's image here uh, of this line, I think I, I covered it in the, in the program at the month that he entered this, this image. If this image goes straight into a black and white without tweaking it, um, not contrast, nothing, just in, in the right um, black and white plugin or menu, then this without a doubt, would have been in the, in the final six of year, this year. We've done the conversion in black and white, and it 100% and it brings across the character of the lion, uh, the lion's aggression and his temperament, uh, the two brothers drinking together at a water hole. Um, this one here is, is, um, is a beautiful landscape of you. He got it right by, by having just the two trees. This is a typical camel thorn, old camel thorn. Um, it's, it's low uh, growing branches and some, some dead branches that's been, sh been shredded because it wants the rest to survive. And beautiful low clouds, almost, almost touching the, the camel thorn and then beautiful pink hue that is created by this red, orange, pinkish um, 
Kalahari landscape. And just the just a small bit of blue that gives a bit of hope to the photo. So a beautiful landscape altogether, although it's very difficult. If you look at this landscape of, of you, this is a typical fine art image. Absolutely fantastic. Deserve it to be um, in the top six, maybe. If you don't really get this picture, you can very easily underestimate the quality of this image. Uh, I will quickly address it. If you look at the triangle that this forms, which is probably the strongest aesthetic form that one gets is the triangle together with the S curves and the C curves and the more they repeat themselves the better. So you've got a, a peak that goes straight into the, the core of the sunset, the sun itself and is left as grass to be lit up as, an, as a profile um, in the sun over there. So he puts this um, grass square in the center of, of the object the main object which is the sky and the sun of the sky itself. It reflects as a bit of sea curves in the waves down here and it reflects the sand, the typical Kalahari sand, not the green but the, the sand that we know the Kalahari for most of the year. Um, very well composed uh, the selection where you to, to put the horizon and look at those leading lines, three leading lines, massive leading lines that the, that the the clouds also form to bring one into, into this focal area, which is the triangle that leads up to the leading lines over here and a center of attraction here. The, the clouds on the left and right forms a, a natural vignetting on the top, which also enhances and further forces one, one's eye into the major part of the composition. And here, the compositional elements are not just leading lines and this shape of the triangle, and a bit of this pattern, but the color and the opposites in color, dark and light, bright and dark, the orange and the yellow, um, those are all strong elements of the foundation of composition. Uh, you has also done the, um, this black and white that also could have been in the, in the top six, and you'll see now, now why he's not in the top six with this image, but a beautiful example of of a typical black and white, and we'll discuss the detail of it in another program. Uh, Mary Jane has, has entered probably the cleanest um, landscape and one that that sort of should be or could be in the in the top six, as simple as that. It's just simple that we have to cut the line. But on a different day, this could be this this will reflect very nice on any any wall. It is it is it reflects tranquility and, and peace. And, and, and she got right what we all want to do. We want the subject matter on a clean horizon with no distraction. And here you got that perfect sun. You got the, the giraffe eating on the camel thorn tree, which is a camel, used to be camel. Um, and uh, uh, in Afrikaans it's called a camel pair, the giraffe, a uh, camel horse. And so there's a bit of an interplay um, morphological sort of playing between the tree and the animal itself and then the, the sun that lights, lights up everything. Very clean horizon. No distraction in this grass in front. There's no three, three thorn bushes, nothing. It's just the grass and everything focuses on you. So an absolutely fantastic image. That is the typical type of image that we select the top six from a wildlife photography point of view. But if if sales come into play, if one if one takes one's um, experience from, from what triggers people to buy into wildlife photography. This is an image that will be one of the top sellers um, from my point of view. Michiel Dievenhoge has sent this beautiful um, cub, and, um, but there's one thing that kept him maybe two points out of the final, and that's the light in here. Um, the levels are not right. If you open this up in, in Photoshop and you look at the levels, you'll see that the levels, if you simply just tweak it um, to the left, it brings out the gold of the sun. And you can see in the grasses here, if you look very nicely, that light over there is actually more golden and it requires a bit more light. And all it does is if you touch the levels, you don't have to go into saturation, nothing else, just levels. Then it brings out the, the true color and, and then the light compares with, with the rest of these images. Tracy has entered a, a leopard that, if I woke up 
the next morning I would have fought for this one to be in the top six. So, so you know, it's, it's neither here nor there. It is as good a portrait of a leopard that you'll get anywhere. And it is most probably one of the top um, um, leopard portraits ever taken in the Kalari. If you look at this green and you look at these branches that are framing, you see behind the leopard, it's quite open and the branches are absolutely camel thorn branches. You can see that. There's the bristle grass at the bottom in the green period that looks like this. And this was also taken. We were there at the very same day. Um, so this is taken and it shows the green Kalari and not typically Kalari, but the green Kalari. And nevertheless, an absolutely amazing portrait and a, a very good portrait, uh, sorry, a very good cover for a magazine coffee book table and even more so than maybe some of the top six images. So, so these images that just maybe are not in the top six would, would, be, would be finals or top six within a different category, either sales of, of images, uh, maybe make a better postcard or, or better on the wall. But um, from a wildlife photography point of view, we need to consider a couple of other elements like action, etc. So this is it. Uh, let's just talk about Warren's uh, absolute amazing image that I feel that's artistic enough and the, the, the uh, metaphorical um, visualization of, of, the, of the bee eater uh, actually catching the bee and the bee that are, that are quite big in here. It looks like this image has been taken with a macro lens. So I don't know how, how big this is, how this was cropped, but look, you can still see the eye. The sun reflects straight in the eye and one keep on looking to this. So, so this also would be a magnificent um, coffee table book cover. And that leaves us with the news and the selection of the top six. And here we go. Karl Stander, Dominic Maria, Gio Joester, Gert Lamprecht, Hugh Mitchler and Willem Kruger. Our top six guys for 2021 Galagadi Wildlife Photographic Competition. This male line make it to the top six to the final um, because it is the icon species. Uh, number one, let's tick off the box there. Number two, it is it goes further than just clicking the, the shutter button. It is a very beautiful black and white rendition. And besides uh, just the black and white or just transferring it from color to black and white, what happens here, I have mentioned it in the in the judgment of the month. If you look at the foreground, vignetting is done with a reason. It, it's done so that one focuses on the subject of, of the photo. What happened with this photo is that the natural elements cause the vignetting of the top two corners, the total top and the total bottom, that places your emphasize, that emphasizes the subject, which is, which is the line. Look how nice the mane of the line is standing straight up. It's not lying flat. It's a big, thick bush. Even there, it's very even. It's not demacar. It's not wet with the very white, dominant C curve of the head over there, the mouth, the C curve that the white here repeats itself from there, this C curve over here, that one over there, the ears I C curve, this, the mouth. So, so there's no, it's not automatic that this is a good image. If you look at the bottom, the foreground has been either darkened or it's coincidentally like that. And that once again takes your eye away from this distraction of the total and mere foreground. It places the subject in this second color or zone. This one over here. There's another zone, that white zone over there. It's very clear in every zone. There's a lighter gray over there, and then there's the dark cloud, which leaves a silver lining at the bottom and almost accentuates. If you look, look at that shape over there, that points straight towards the line. It also covers all of the tonal range, the zones, the 10 zones that you get in the black and white from, from total black in certain images, um, or certain parts of the image, to the gray tones, to a very close to almost white that you got over there with no detail in. So a beautiful um, black and white or beautiful portrait and um, a lot of points because um, it, the photographer worked a bit further than just capturing the image. It actually um, attempted to enhance the image that's captured. This is 
absolutely superb. Um, this um, looks like it's been done in a, a, a post-processing by a guy that's very good in Photoshop. But this is a, um, as good a fine art wildlife portrait as you'll get anywhere in the world from any subject. The Cory Bustard is a typical Kilari animal. We all see them um, roaming up and down the riverbeds. And look at how this beam of light streams in from the top, from the head down into, and then also just highlighting or accentuates the animal uh, that are on the center. Look at the corner over there is a triangle that's been totally darkened. And you've got another triangle that are darkened opposite that one. And it sandwiches this Cory Bustard in an almost dual tone um, in, in the center. Um, with all the, all the droplets um, over here, absolutely amazing image. Hugh Juster, one of our last year's finalists. Um, we had so many uh, line cup images that one can really, um, if you've been in the top 30, you can tap, tap yourself on the, on the back because, because it's, it's neither here nor there. The lighting in this, in this image is to us more true. So if you look at this color of the, of the sand, it's not in the sun, it's, it's, an, it's an overcast uh, or early morning um, light. No harsh shadows um, that you find anywhere. It is a silhouette or the side of a lion with a very uh, loving head dropping towards the cubs, um, also caressing them. The cubs interplaying with the mother. It shows not just the cub, but it shows the cub and the mother. So there's no question mark that or, or worry that if there's a cub alone, we wonder whether the the cub is so the mother has survived and the cub is now left alone. It's, the image gives you a lot of peace and and tranquility, and it, sh and, it and it shows you and it gives you hope that that this cubs can still survive in this desert. And the desert obviously is portrayed very little vegetation besides this over here and this probably vitgat that causes or that forms this very evenly green dark patch over here. It's not a blotted piece of dark light gray um, contrast and so on. It's just one dark green color. That enhances or ensures that this little cub here and the, the, the mother over here is highlighted, it's accentuated. And then of course the center of, of everything is around here and the little face of the one cup that looks here. If this one cup didn't look towards us, then it, it wouldn't have been as powerful. But it yeah, it, it ticks the boxes and it, it's a true reflection of of the Khalakhali line. Gert Lamprecht has done a, a subject that everyone races um, to capture and it can, can get boring um, as everyone does it but the, it shows you that you can still get winning images and good images of the subject matter. You never know what's going to happen. In this specific instance, it is, um, it is the silhouette and if you look at the line of the ostriches, it goes over here, they're all straight besides this one that's elevated. And the dust, the puff of dust is done exactly that. It's actually repeated the pattern of the ostriches and it's as if when this guy stood up, it bounced the dust back up with him. So it accentuates, once again, this light accentuates subconsciously the attention onto this ostrich that's standing up and preaching to the rest of him. What also helps is the fact that they're turning sideways, it's not just towards towards the back or to the front. And here's some, some dust coming through, giving you a bit of dimension with these three ostriches that are further and these are closer. So a fantastic uh, image of this ostriches. If you um, boost the saturation, you get the dust more orange. Uh, if you do a black and white, it also comes out beautiful. A couple of black and white renditions looks beautiful. So the image also allows itself to um, to be transformed into a, a variety of of artistic renditions, and it must score points for that. And where can you get a better reflection of the Kalari Gemspok Park, which is, as a matter of fact, all the images are taken in the Kalari Gemspok Park, the the name for some reason is not being used and it's very hard so because that's 
the park that built the Galahari Transfront here Park, which is both of them, but uh, it's the Kalahari Gemsburg Park, however you look at it. And by capturing the image into the sun, um, it uh, you waited for the for the right moment. Of course, it could have been serendipitous. It could have been at the at the moment that he drove past. But if the cloud moved just that far, if it moved moved further into the sun, it would have had no shade or shadow whatsoever. And the shade and the shadow that this um, Gemsbok are creating over here forms a major part of this um, photograph because although the Gemsbok are quite small and with this shadow, without the shadow, it could have been in but it wouldn't have been as powerful. Look how the shadows of the Gemsbok are actually enlarged um, in the foreground. So what it is, it repeats the Gemsbok and it subconsciously actually enhances the size of the Gemsbok. The beams that are beaming out and beaming up is also always a strong element in photography. And then, and then it all takes a, a plays itself off in this open pan, dry pan along the riverbed or this dry areas that are normally um, wet first. Um, but it allows the eye to concentrate absolutely on this area over here. There's no distraction of the dwellings or anything else. And look at the pink hue that the clouds are making over here, which gives it a difference. So if you enlarge this image on a wall, it'll actually come to its full right. And this is the the um, the action shot that went through of Willem. He's got quite a couple. Um, that's one that won quite a couple of prizes. I think it was taken quite a couple of years ago. Um, but we've selected this one. Um, I, I don't have to say much about the image. It's an action image. It doesn't leave much interpretation. Um, one do get drawn in and want to look a bit further. And if you do start concentrating, you know, one wonders what is that? Is that another bird or is it is that a part of that um, bird over there? The, the feathers over here shows that he actually grabbed it somewhere over here, it got loose, and then it grabs it again. So there's a story in there, and we ask ourselves, what is that story? Look at the eye coming through that two feathers in the air, looking straight at the bird, and you can see that he actually missed this. But you also wonder, you know, did he miss it or did he not miss it? It, it takes a lot of patience to actually capture this, and uh, you have to work hard to get this. It is a common subject. Everyone races to get it, and it can get boring, uh, um, but uh, 90 photos of this will will be very close to the previous one, and one is still missing, and I don't know what that is. Maybe um, of a Lana Falcon hitting it at the same time or whatever. So congratulations to Hugh, Dominique, Karl, Gert, Hugh Mitzler, and Willem Kruger. Those are the six guys that... Um, going to be invited. We'll send their mails um, as soon as I finish here or as soon as we've uploaded the program. And those are the six. There are other categories that we'll, um, we'll appoint as well, uh, the winners of. But that's it. Congratulations to these guys for um, magnificent images and to everyone else. And please remember that there's some images that really should have gone through to the top that, that um, the editing or the lack of editing um, and editing, you know, th there are certain things that you can do. If you look at an uh, image or a subject into the sun, um, your eye has got a much greater latitude than any camera on this world that, that currently uh, um, has been manufactured. So you have to, unfortunately, at the touch level, um, touch the exposure, but specifically the levels or maybe the shadows because one's eye looks much more accurate. So if you look at the image, if it hasn't been fixed to what the eye can see, then it's not really. And what, what I've said in the previous judgment is there's a lot of criteria that we judge um, the photos from, but, but to me the most important is light because photography is painting with light. That's what it means. So uh, if, if you don't get the light right in the Kalahari, which is one of the places on this planet that's got the best light, then there's, there's, there's something wrong. So whatever picture you take, your light that you produce on the image has got to be the best light. There's no excuse for bad lighting on an image. And there's, there's other images that, are just, that, ha that lacks 
the photographer within very soon will pick up um, experience because that's how everyone grows. Um, I've seen a specific age group with all of the photographers. There's one young photographer, Dominique, is coming through if I look at her stuff. And there are also something to say, you know, there are photographers that like Willem, Hugh Mietzler, Gerd, Gerd uh, Lamprecht, Hugh, Carl uh, over here, you know, those are guys that, that's been coming a, a long way with their photographs and, and, they, and they're currently waiting for the next level. The guys like Willem has done a couple of good images around 2013, 2015, around there. And I'd like to see some new stuff from the guys. We haven't restricted the, the competition to images that must be taken um, in the 12 months before. I don't know whether we should do it. You can leave your comments at the bottom. Um, but I've discovered that an old image, if it's re-edited, if you take this image and you make a black and white of it, or something artistic 10 years later, it's a different image. You know, one can enter that. But it's a bit wide to define. So there we go. That's that's a congratulations to this guys. Like I said, I'll make a couple of other programs and maybe coach and mentor some of the guys um, that was in the bigger group and to show them and give them some advice what they should do to go into this year's. And um, saying that, the New Year comp the competition of 2021 and 2022 has just opened, the 1st of September. We've already seen some great images coming in on Facebook and on email. So um, we've got some, some great news about the new competition. Orms Photo Suppliers and Framing has also joined the competition with a sponsorship of a couple of prizes. Uh, all the other prizes are the same. Like I said, there's a couple of new ones. Um, we'll disclose that very soon on social media. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the Kalari.